Hi guys, welcome to part 6 of the Python Turtle tutorial. In this video we're going to learn another way to do loops in Python. So a few lessons ago we probably had some code like this, which asks the user for a letter and then draws a shape according to that. You probably had a rectangle, a triangle and a parallelogram. And hopefully after last lesson you were able to cut down the repetition and you could use a for loop to repeat certain lines of code. So hopefully your code looks a little bit like this. So what I want to do today is I want to repeat my program over and over and over, allowing the user to draw as many shapes as they want until they press Q. So it might be that they select a S for a square and then they press Q, so I've repeated once. It might be they draw a square and then a rectangle, and then they press Q, so they've repeated twice. They might press Q straight away, so not repeat at all. The key thing is I don't know how many times they're going to repeat, so that means I can't use a for loop, which I showed you in the last video. Instead, I'm going to use a while loop, which is a form of condition-controlled loop. And basically, this repeats while a certain condition is true. And in my case, I want to repeat my entire program while the choice the user makes is not equal to Q. So in other words, while they've not pressed Q, I want to keep repeating. And you'll notice that in Python, to say not equals, we use the exclamation mark and the equal sign. So I put that line at the top of my program, while choice is not equal to Q. And then just like the if statement, just like the for loop, I need to indent the lines which I want to be inside this construct. So I need to select all of the lines down to the bottom of my code, press tab, and now all of those lines are inside my while loop. Right at the top here on line 3, the first time I get there, the computer won't know what the value of choice is because I haven't entered it yet. So just above that, I want to give choice the value x. I could use anything here that's not Q. Basically, I want choice not to be equal to Q so that line 5 is true and the while loop will start to repeat. And there are two more changes I want to make now in my program. The first one is I'm going to get rid of this turtle.done line. The purpose of turtle.done is that it keeps the turtle window on the screen until I close it. But the only way for our program to get down here to line 24 is if I press Q. And if I press Q, it seems reasonable that the window should close. So I'm not going to force it open. I'm going to delete that line of code and allow the window to close. The second thing I need to do is slightly change this else statement. And I'm going to put here, elif the choice is not equal to Q, then print it's not a valid character. Because of course, Q is a valid character. OK, let's run the program. I would like a square. And there you can see my square has been drawn. And also, you can see the menu has come back. Because the loop has gone back to the top of the loop, it's printed the menu again, it's asking me for another choice. OK, this time I want a rectangle. There's my rectangle. And again, you can see the menu has come back. And this time I'd like to quit, so I press Q. And the program quits. Another place that while loops are really useful is for input validation. So in other words, to make sure the user has entered a sensible value. So here I've got a single line of code that asks the user for the length of a side. It doesn't make a lot of sense for the length to be zero or less. So what I can do is add a while loop here. Right at the top, while length is less than or equal to zero and then indent that input line so that it's inside the while loop. Then at the top, I just need to initialize length to be 0. So we can imagine what's going to happen here. On line 2, length will be 0. On line 3, while length is less than or equal to 0. Well, 0 is less than or equal to 0, so it will go into the loop. It will ask for the input. If that input is negative, well, a negative number is less than or equal to 0, so the loop will continue going around. If that number is greater than zero, then the loop will finish and the program will continue. 
Okay, let's see that in action. So the key thing here is I don't know how many times the user is going to enter an invalid value before they get it right. So I couldn't use a for loop in this situation. Okay, so that was a very quick overview of while loops. If we were to summarize the difference, we would say that for loops are used when we know how many times we're going to repeat something, and while loops are used when we don't know how many times we're going to repeat something. Okay guys, I'm going to leave you with a couple of simple activities to work on. You will need to make the choice between the right kind of loop, a for loop or a while loop, within these activities. Sometimes you need both, but you need to use the right one in the right place.